it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? Thanks, Mom. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him. After his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if that was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Gathering my courage, I decided then that it was time to talk. Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. But it's so sudden. You just decided so quickly right after the funeral. Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, my father rubbed his temples and sighed quietly. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! But what if I don't want to work here? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. He came closer to me and his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. For some reason, when I heard him say that, something snapped in me. I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that grandfather passed away? Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. It's like nothing even happened at all. Like you just ignore the fact that he's no longer here. Do not raise your voice at me. What did he ever do to you to deserve this? My brother, his face hardened, crossed his arms and rubbed in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> you sure place him upon a pedestal, like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grandfather dead? While well, everyone was grieving. Were you holding yourself back from loving everyone's faces? Did you feel just a bit happier seeing him lie in the graveyard? A flash of rage crossed his face, and he ripped the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on, when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! You did not know my father! You did not know what he was capable of. Is everything all right? What happened? Nothing. I am not hungry. I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! I quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in sharp pants, and for a while I just leaned against the door to my bedroom, eventually s sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheek still dropped, and I attentively stood up and looked at the mirror to see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't bruise. Huh. What am I saying? There's frown in the corners of my eyes, but I break them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for the second time today. I had to be stronger than that. Are you all right? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. I'm fine. I just lost my appetite. The lasagna's done, though, and I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? 
Yeah, don't worry about me, ma'am. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. I, I just don't want to eat right now. Please, dear. Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. I wanted to tell her. A part of me was screaming to tell her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remind the past. Well, I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. Finally, my mom left me alone. It was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything to get my mind off what just happened. Anything would be better than thinking anymore about the pain she radiating from my cheek. I was going to move into my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so I'd be prepared for tomorrow. Yeah. That was a good idea. I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaging around for a while before I finally found two large bags. Pulling them out of the floor of my room, I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so that I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring other than just clothes and some toiletries. It was kind of bizarre that I didn't have many personal belongings. It wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that I would miss if I just suddenly left the house. I shook my head to rid myself of those thoughts. If it were going to be my new home, it would have to feel like it. One way or another, I was going to make it home. Just as I was packing my things, my cell phone began ringing and vibrating my pocket. I see my phone out of my pocket and answer it while slowly easing myself on my bed. Who could possibly be calling? Hey Anderson, you there? Is everything alright? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Hello? I'm really glad you guys called. My voice managed to come out, though it was only a whisper. What happened? Are you okay? Well, I slowly began to tell them about the funeral that afternoon. A small silence followed when I was done recounting what happened, and to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. Do you want us to come over right now? No, it's okay. My dad is in a good mood, so would we just keep talking on the phone like this? Of course! We'd stay on the phone until the crack of dawn, right, Suzu? Yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? <laughs> yeah. Triple threat trio? That sounds like the name of a gang. Yeah, I mean, we're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you in naming things? You've got to step up your game, Naomi. Falling behind to the cool kids like Anderson and me. <laughs> hey! I'm a cool kid! If anything, I say you have to step up your game! We chatted cheerfully about all sorts of things. Very soon I had forgotten about the events that day. I was engaged in a conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show, some program called Herlock. We all agreed that the actor playing the titular character suddenly had a very distinctive look about him, with that long overcoat and scruff wrap around his neck. We had many disagreements about who we thought was the coolest character. Ah uh -huh, yeah, he has really high cheekbones and his eyes are pretty. Though, I love to say I prefer Jackson, and as a bonus, his actor is just so sassy. I look at the clothes hanging on the wall and realize how late it was. Whoa, it's already 1am? Sorry for keeping you guys up so late. I think I'm gonna hit the hay for night. See you guys at school tomorrow. I should pull a shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stay up this late just to talk to my friends. But it was really nice. Well, to the bathroom I go. I took a relaxing shower. Nothing beat hot water and the feeling of being clean. After drying myself, 
I promptly dress in my pajamas and crawl in bed. Oh, nice hot shower of the long day. I'm so glad to finally be in bed. It had been a really long day. I knew that I was so wishing for something to change back in class, but certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Oh, I caught up on my sign, Patty wrapped the blankets around me. I really was in the mood to be returning to school, but my dad probably would make me go just for the sake of it. It's time to go to sleep. I reached out to the lamp on my nice stand to turn off the light. However, my mom was so lost in the past with my grandfather and the thought of inheriting something so big that I hung my mind the entire night until the next morning.